After spending five days in the field, I was getting worn out, and I could feel the creative blinders starting to take hold. In years past, I would have pushed right through it and driven straight to Death Valley. By this time, I had a different approach. I drove home to regroup, then returned to Death Valley a few days later with a fresh perspective. It seems like all my photo trips have the same trajectory. They start with big plans and big ideas, but eventually settle into a rhythm that can be difficult to keep up with, especially when juggling both video and photography. It felt great to return home for a few days, to get cleaned up, and then set out again with the energy of a new trip. Unlike my first visit to Death Valley over a week ago, the weather forecast is far more forgiving. It calls for calm wind and high clouds ahead of a large storm that is set to arrive in the next several days. My primary goal leading into this trip was to spend more time exploring new locations. Death Valley is an enormous national park. There's so much of it I've yet to see. I've spent the last several days studying satellite imagery in search of interesting formations. I made a list of locations to explore, but if none of them work out, I've got a backup plan to make use of those wonderful high clouds. It felt great to be back in Death Valley, and I looked forward to what I'd find in the days to come. So I have officially arrived here in Death Valley, and there's a lot of blue sky. It's fairly warm right now, but there are some clouds like back over there that are kind of starting to filter into the main valley. And there's a storm system on the way. It's not supposed to be a big one, but um, could be a chance of some rain in the coming days. And as that storm approaches, um, I'm not sure I'm gonna have some good light for sunset tonight, but um, who knows? I've got some, some stuff planned, we'll see on that. But one thing I did not get an opportunity to do last year was uh, spend a lot of time kind of scouting around and uh, checking out some new areas. And that's because there was a really big storm that was you know, going through the park when I got here. So, this year I don't really have to hit the ground running like that. So I get a chance to explore, to look around, and to see what I can find. So I'm making my way up this really big, rocky alluvial fan, which is basically just a big pile of debris that has come down from the mountains back behind me over there. And I'm just kind of curious about that area there, kind of like the little, uh, I wouldn't say it's a slot canyon, but just kind of the uh, area where all the debris kind of comes down. So I'm gonna go up there, and then I'm gonna head back down to the salt flats over there and uh, check out a couple areas that have kind of come into view. But I love doing this. I love kind of getting out there, just wandering around. It's one of the ways I can kind of find some pretty cool locations that are a little off the beaten path. And I'm guessing I will not find anything for my little wander today, but it's still really fun to get out here. And I'm getting pretty close to the base of those mountains. Almost there. Well, I made it to the end of the line. This is the spill-off point back behind me over here. And there's just a couple quick little bends in this canyon before I got to where I am right now. Uh, but what I did find was some really nice shade. It's kind of uh, enjoying that right now before heading back down the alluvial fan. And it's hard to kind of put in perspective how big these alluvial fans are. They don't look super huge from the road, but uh, they actually gain quite a bit of elevation as you work your way up them. Uh, this one right here, I probably gained I don't know, maybe like 700 feet, something like that. So, but now I'm going to rest up a little bit, head back down the alluvial fan, uh, cross the road and check out some of the areas across over in the uh, uh, sort of salt flat areas. But good little exercise this morning, but uh, let me see what else I could find. So I'm making my way back down the alluvial fan. And uh, what do I stumble upon? Mylar balloon. Happy birthday. 
So I'm actually working on a project on this trip where I am photographing these where I found them with a uh, Fuji Instax camera. And then I'm going to take all these balloons home. I'm going to photograph them in kind of a studio situation and then create like a little book or something along those lines that has you know, the Polaroid of where it was found as well as sort of the studio photo of it. So I create a little rock side there. Um, that way I can kind of help raise awareness of how far these things actually travel and where they actually end up. And there's also something about, you know, have a balloon like this that says, happy birthday here. It was used at some sort of celebration, maybe like 100, 150 miles away from here. And it kind of drifted off here on its own. It's just kind of, you know, out here in the landscape all by itself that it's almost kind of sad in addition to the fact that it's just litter at this point. So got one more balloon for my little project. So I made my way down to the salt flats so where I'm just going to wander around a little bit and uh, see if any of the formations or anything down here kind of catch my eye. But as I was wandering around, I was thinking a little bit about the first part of the trip. So a little over a week ago, when I originally set out here to Death Valley, I kind of had a little bit of mixed thoughts about the trip. Typically, I get pretty excited about it, you know, being able to go off and try to find some pretty cool subjects. Um, but there's something about the first trip of the year that also gives me some degree of a, a sense of hesitation just because I know how much work it's going to be. And I've kind of set things up with the box sets and the videos where I definitely want to be productive. And at the start of the year, kind of everything gets wiped clean. I kind of start over again. And thankfully I was able to find six different subjects on the first part of the trip. But as a matter of context, I have not developed that film yet. So you guys know how that part turned out. I really don't. Um, but now that I'm kind of here wandering around, um, I have this sense of peace, which I really like. And this is a sort of feeling I really enjoy when it comes to going on these photography trips. So this is the sort of Death Valley that I really enjoy visiting where you can just kind of spend some time wandering around and uh, trying to find some cool subjects that speak to you for one reason or another. So, kind of a muddy pool of water back behind me here. It doesn't speak to me. been a couple hours or so, made myself some lunch, and I kind of drove north to kind of the Furnace Creek area. And uh, I'm noticing that as the high clouds are coming in here, uh, there are some low clouds that are kind of starting to build kind of along the uh, ridge line there of Telescope Peak. And what I've noticed in years past is that whenever a storm system rolls through, you might have some really beautiful high clouds that are absolutely exactly what you want, but uh, sometimes you'll get these low clouds that build up back behind the peak and just absolutely snuffs out any chance of good light. And then they kind of dissipate once the sunset's done. So that's kind of what I'm guessing is going to happen. Going to have some high clouds build in. Might be a pretty nice sunset. And some low clouds will build in. And then snuff it out if you're directly back behind Telescope Peak. So a little north of there to hope to hopefully avoid that. But I'm heading out to some mud flats. Here's a composition I found out here in years past that was pretty decent. Kind of messed it up last time I tried to shoot it. So I'm gonna see if I can find that shot. Hopefully it's still looking pretty good.
So I went ahead and set up my camera here. So I have a composition with this bush right here, kind of centered in the foreground, using my wide angle lens there on the camera. And there are some coyote tracks here, which is kind of interesting going through the mud there. And the sun is gonna be setting back behind the mountain back over here. And there's some clouds back over there. And uh, all throughout the afternoon, they've been kind of mostly hanging in there, but they're starting to thin out a little bit. And what I'm really hoping is that some of the clouds back over here are gonna stay in place there. And it has some nice clouds kind of back there in the sky. But uh, got another, I don't know, probably a few hours or so until sunset. And a little less than that before the foreground here is in shade. So we'll see what happens. So the sun is probably about 15 minutes or so from dropping back behind the peaks over there. And when it does, the whole foreground here is gonna be in shade. They'll have just a little bit more time until last little bits of light are on the mountains in the background. So it's gonna be a little bit of a rushed situation, but uh, the clouds are kind of hanging in there. So I think there's a chance it might give at least some degree of a little bit of a texture, at least something other than just blank sky. But it's a little milky looking, but I think once the sun gets to be kind of low, it'll give kind of a nice look to it. But I got my camera set up there, ready to go. Got my uh, film holders ready to go. So it'll just be a matter of metering the light and then uh, making some exposures once the light starts getting pretty good. So the sun is set back behind the mountains, so the valley here is in shade. And I went ahead and exposed two sheets of Provia as the last bits of light were kind of hitting the mountains over there. That's not really what I expect to be the good shot. Hopefully um, we'll have the clouds light up a little bit more as the uh, evening progresses, but those are just kind of the safety shots so I can can have something but uh got to wait around a little bit while longer maybe another 20 minutes or so and then hopefully we'll get some nice soft light on those mountains and maybe those clouds will light up so as the evening has progressed i went ahead and exposed two sheets of velvia 50 as there is kind of this nice kind of pastel light hitting the clouds and kind of a soft kind of cool light in the foreground and I thought the light was mostly done, but then uh, wait a little while longer because you always got to wait a little while longer. And then uh, the clouds kind of lit up nice and crimson. It didn't last very long and there were some contrails in the background that was a little distracting. But I did expose a single sheet of Provia. And I still have the film holder in my camera back there. I'm going to wait until kind of the twilight blue hour kind of shot and then uh, expose that as well for the Provia because it does really well with that kind of a scene. But. Pretty cool to find a decent composition here on my first day of my second part of my trip to Death Valley. And I'm looking forward to spending some time tomorrow kind of scouting around as the first little bits of the storm are on the way. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm gonna wait a little while longer here, then get things packed up and head back to camp. So I just wrapped up my final exposure. It was a sort of a blue hour twilight sort of exposure on Provia 100. And it was a sort of exposure where it was metered at two minutes and then pretty soon, you know, my light meter is telling me to do like, you know, four minutes. So it's getting really dark really fast. So at a certain point, you just kind of cut off the exposure and hope that you got it all right. But I think it'll be really interesting to see the range of light starting when the mountains were in sun, but the foreground dropped in the shade to when there was sort of the pastel sort of clouds in the sky. Uh, and that was uh, when I shot on Velvia 50. And then a little bit later on when I shot one on Provia when there was some sort of crimson light in the clouds. And then finally the blue hour shot on Provia. So I always find it to be a learning experience to kind of see how the film reacts in all these different sort of situations and make sure I'm doing a pretty good job with the metering and everything else along those lines. But I'm pretty excited about today as far as getting here, exposing some film, um, finding a pretty decent subject, having ideal conditions because the the wind is absolutely dead calm right now, which is which is really nice. And the clouds kind of, they, they, they did a pretty good job. They were right where they needed to be, which is good. But now I got to get this camera packed up, head back to camp, make myself some dinner, but definitely feeling pretty good about today.
If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution of just $24 a year helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donation section of my website at benhorn.com donate. I also have prints in my portfolio box set available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support.